from CareCo TV, one of the longest running outdoor programs on television today. Exploring the country and the coast in search of adventures. From the mountains of the great Northwest to the shores of the Atlantic Ocean, this is Americana Outdoors, presented by Garmin. This week on Americana Outdoors, we're joining Wade Middleton on yet another epic South African hunt with John X Safaris. Now, during our time here in the Eastern Cape of South Africa, we've had an absolutely thrilling journey, and it's one that we'll always cherish as we reflect on it fondly. But before we dive into Wade's next excursion, let's learn about what makes John X Safari such a world-class outfitter to hunt with in South Africa. John X Safaris was started in 1983, so this year is actually our 40th year. Today is a 30,000 acre concession and growing, home to 24 different species, all naturally occurring. Starting at the top with Cape Buffalo and Giraffe as our biggest species, right down to the Stienbuck and Commandaika. I think the journey is what makes it worthwhile. If it's work, you're never going to enjoy it the same way. And I think that we wake up in the morning and we are able to really enjoy what we do. You feel like you achieve something. You know, every, every hunt, every experience, you end up becoming a team. At the end of the day, we're all getting over the line together with a common goal of, of delivering not only the animals, but a world-class experience with it. And speaking of world-class experiences, let's take a look at what Wade has harvested so far. From having the opportunity to go on a spot and stalk for a Gemsbach. Great shot. World-class. Well, that was a great stock, one that'll... I've got the dirt embedded into my hands for my flight trip home. I might not wash them. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> to covering miles of ground for a massive mature water buck. Perfect. I believe he's down. The sheen on these horns is something I was not prepared for. It's yes. so amazing and it's a, you know it's obviously a short time of the year you're ever going to see that. Yeah. Yeah. All the way up to harvesting a gorgeous zebra mare. Great shot. Absolutely world class. You couldn't have done a better job uh, and it's a beautiful zebra, beautiful old mare. And I'm sure it'll make a lot of Oh, that's, you, eh? yeah, and it'll feed a lot of, a lot of people in the area. Yes. I think we're going to visit your school Yes, soon. we're going to use this zebra as our weekly meat drop. And its core value, coming to Africa to hunt big game animals in their native land, is something every hunter dreams about getting the chance to experience. But once they're here with John X Safaris, hunters get the opportunity to be part of something bigger than themselves. And that's donating the meat of their hunts to the Carlisle Bridge Farm School, which provides nutritious lunches to the school children. When you look at efforts like this, all of it comes together through the funds of the hunters that support this part of South Africa that we're in. And without those, none of this exists. And I think that's something that is always lost by anti-hunters and people that don't understand it. And the hunters' funds, they're gonna donate money back to it. They donate money to help make the funds. They're gonna help donate a lot of their meat. If you like opportunities to help, this is one of those ones I'm telling you. If you come to hunt South Africa, look at these guys' operation, or to heck, spend some time, donate some money to one of their charitable operations that they have over here because, I mean, this is a group, in my opinion, what I'm seeing, they're trying to give something back to both the land and the people that are here on it. Beyond all of the hunting adventures and visiting the school that John X Safari supports through their sustainable hunting program, Wade and Angel also had an opportunity to explore other attractions that South Africa has to offer, like going on a safari to meet Mike the Cheetah. We went up the mountain, the ranger got out two or three times, did his little telemetry thing, got the hits, and, and we were able to hike right up to it with everybody in our party and watch him. And to me, it looked like our house cats at home. He'd had a big night out partying and eating, and he was trying to take a nap, just waiting for us to move on. True to the outdoorsman that he is, Wade also had a chance to grab a rod and reel and hit the water and take in some breathtaking views while catching fish he's never even heard of. <laughs> <laughs> yes, That's awesome. That is <laughs> As you can see, Wade and our team have had so many incredible interactions with the wildlife that the Eastern Cape of South Africa has to offer. And he's not done yet. 
For his next big game trophy, he's got his eyes set on an animal that the locals refer to as royal game, the Inyala. But this time, he's leaving the rifle and Trigicon scope behind and picking up his trusty Blackout NV32 compound bow, equipped with a Garmin Zero bow sight. As he takes his time to unpack and check his bow, let's hear about his setup he'll be hunting with in the field. When you start talking to the folks over here in South Africa that have a variety of big game and some of them are real thick skinned and some of them are thin skinned, you know, they, they really prefer you shoot a, a fixed blade when it comes to a lot of the big thicker skinned animals. And I am going to be carrying some of the FXDs, the blackouts. And with the Garmin Zero, I can instantly change my profiles at the push of a button. I've got an MX6 and then I've got a fixed profile in there as well so that if we get into those situations and I want to be as accurate as I can, there's about an inch and a half difference on where those two fly at 35 yards. That's the advantage of the Garmin Zero in that situation there. So we're prepared, we're ready, we've practiced, we've traveled across the big pond, drove up and down the coast, and now we've got a beautiful backdrop and hopefully we'll get some stuff out in front of us. We'll return to the field in just a moment, but in the meantime, take this opportunity to subscribe to our Americana Outdoors YouTube channel. The Inyala, it was something high on my bucket list, and Carl and his team was pretty confident in the ability to find some Inyalas. And my experience with Inyalas and in talking to people, people like Carl and their team, they really like that bottom land type stuff. Down in the brush, they kind of move in small groups. So as we kind of got into a position in an area that Carl was pretty high, we might see some Inyalas. And we're kind of working down a little creek, working our way through basically a drainage, getting up in there. There's some Inyala that we've kind of spotted, but we've got to get close. King is way this way. I just want to go up ahead. I think he's going to come out right below us in these little clearings and we can work our way and let David watch it. But I basically saw a pool in the river, kind of meandering, but coming down the river. times I've been in a hunting situation with a bow where we let an arrow go and we immediately are either down in the dumps or we're through the roof ecstatic and I'm watching that arrow and it's flying perfectly true right within an inch of where I'm aiming Carl was like good shot everybody I was excited we were celebrating but then comes that period you have to sit down you have to sit down you have to wait that's part of bow hunting with about an hour of daylight left, Wade and the John X crew gave the Inyala some time before taking off in search of a blood trail. But it wasn't long before the team realized they had jumped this Inyala. It's been my experience anytime you jump any species after you've wounded them, 
that's strike one. He's got an advantage on you now. It's totally legal to do this where it's not legal in most states back home is they threw a drone up to see if they could spot it. And they immediately, the tracker up high, he reported, man, this, this animal's hurting. And at the same time, the sun's getting lower and lower. Well, you know, I know when the sun goes down that we're heading back to eat and that's where we were going. So all I have is the night ends and I get the call from Carl is that Inyala jumping over that bush. Mark the last blood and we call it a night. We'll return to the field in just a moment, but in the meantime, take this opportunity to subscribe to our Americana Outdoors YouTube channel. All right, well, we are up this morning, bright and early. Gonna go back where we, uh, lost the blood last night in the dark. I mean, we basically were still on a great blood trail. We ran out of light in the tough terrain, so I had to call it, not, uh, call it a day. That was up there is where we had him last. Yesterday, after the shot, we put the dogs out and they even put a drone up, which is totally legal over here, to get a sense of you know, what was going on. And he worked his way up here. We, we jumped him. Uh, we didn't get him on camera when he jumped, but we did see him. So now we're gonna get back on the track. See, uh, Carl's pretty confident in everything that we're gonna find some success this morning. So let's cross our fingers and hope and we go find this in Yala. Group form. Group form. Good dog. Hey yo, that's well up. Our strategy with our dogs is basically we want to use the dogs in a manner of follow up. So you'll see that our dogs, they all got some kind of terrier in them, so they got a lot of fight in them. We want, an animal, we want a dog to fight an animal because the majority of our game will turn on a dog. And then when a dog is busy with an animal, it gives us the opportunity to get in and kind of make the follow-up shot. So for us, they must have good scenting ability. They must be able to follow up that adrenaline, that blood, because obviously when, it, when the going gets hot, these dogs are not chasing blood anymore, they're chasing adrenaline. And so then they will bay and they will hold and we can follow up. We've battled this morning to pick up on it again, but we have got good blood now again. And David's got the trail in. This Nyala is starting to what we call like meander. He's starting to sneak more. He's starting to use the thicker stuff. He's not going on the, the kind of the path of least resistance. He's trying to throw us now. He knows we're on him. So what we're finding now is from an open spot like this, instead of it going up the path where we would think would be the best, he's going through the little holes. So it will get tougher now, but I do feel that sooner or later we, we will get to where he lay up last night if he's not dead. And I, I feel we should get a chance on him. I'm, I'm very happy we could at least find this. The inclement weather does worry me. There's no rain predicted, but I'm not mad about what I'm seeing above us, a little bit of moisture. So we're going to try and move as fast as we can, support David, follow him. And um, if we put him up, the dogs will hold him. Uh, I have no doubt about be that. He's pretty stiff now. He's going to be stiff, yeah. yeah. So we'll keep going, but most relieved that we do have yeah. this trail again. Let's go, guys. David and Carl are leading us down this path, and, and really at this point, Gentry, who's you know filming all this, and I are doing our best just to kind of keep up. But even being behind them, uh, you know, 20 and 30 yards, we're in moving at a fast pace to stay up. We're able to see lots of blood in lots of places. We found a lot of coagulated blood that had probably come out of his nose, where he'd blown some blood out of his nose. That's always a good sign. We're working our way down through the brush, going this way, then it, the, it ends up on an old two track going up towards a pond. And as we get up towards this pond dam, it, he breaks off to the left and you can find where he bedded down, but he wasn't there. See right there. He's bedded down right there fairly recently. Right now. At this point, there's not a lot of figuration of what's going on. I mean, we're all looking around and I'm like, 
I've been down this road. I've got the book, I've got the t-shirt, I've seen all this where you've made a, what you feel like is a great shot. And, and you're like, what the heck? And you can't find anything. And you get a little numb as the hunter, but everybody's still real confident. And we've got some really awesome dogs that are doing their work. And we hear one of the dogs called Django I mean, he freaking goes nuts about 80 yards away, and they've got a certain way to communicate. And, you, and you're not, your role in this is to really honestly stay out of the way at this point. Don't mess anything up, Wade. And this dog is ruff, 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 and Carl's waiting for a little more confirmation, and then he goes silent. Well, one of the dogs may have baited him. Just quit, Bill. He barked several times. Next thing we know is we hear another bark or two and we just hear this giant splash. And this splash isn't maybe 50 yards away from us. And when we get up there, this is one of the craziest sights I've ever seen in tracking of any animal in my entire life. We'll return to the field in just a moment. But in the meantime, take this opportunity to subscribe to our Americana Outdoors YouTube channel. Come away, come. Right with you. These dogs are doing what they're trained to. They're doing what's ethical, they're doing what is right, and that is to help us recover a wounded animal. So, you know, tensions are high, emotions are high, the dogs are excited. This Inyala is trying to fight them off. He wants to get out of there. My job at this point is to follow Carl's direction and put another arrow into this Inyala without risking anything to the dogs. Good job. Wait, you want to finish him with the boat? Get an arrow in. Get an arrow in. Quickly. Sound this hard to me. That thing comes, we're gonna get hurt ya. Come away, quick. Come away. Watch your dog, watch my dog. Okay, now, it's clear. Now, now, take it, take it. He's kind of at a bad, I don't want to hit the dog. Good dog, Django. <laughs> wow. We, we use tracking dogs so much on our deer and all that and axis down there that I've just got, I mean, it's the right thing to do. They do yeah. things that we can't do, but that, that there is something that I've never experienced in 100, 200 dog tracks. I don't even know. I, I'm just, that was amazing work, amazing work. With Wade's and Yala finished, it's time to recover it from the water as professional hunter Carl and tracker David ease into the pond to pull it to shore. Wow. Hey. Heck yeah. What an adventure, sir. <laughs> well done. Yeah, thank you, David. Well done, David. Good tracking job, Good David. Job, well, yeah. we started this last night. An exciting stalk. We, we had to let him be last night. Yeah. We ran out of light and we ran out of blood. What we thought was we ran out of blood, but we just ran out of light. We couldn't yeah. quite find the trail this morning. We battled a bit and ultimately uh, we then got a good trail. We followed up pretty hard here and uh, here we are. Yes. Uh, this happens from time to time. Animals, when they aren't paid by dogs, do go for water. And, and we see this quite often in a season. And uh, yeah, so glad the dogs could do their work. Django did a hell of a job. Yeah. Good dog, Django. Well, it was amazing how just to watch the whole track and get over here by the water. And when he stood down there, you can see the blood that y'all had found where he stood. And, and then the dogs, they went to work and did the rest. I mean, that was the splash. And I know we won't be able to hear that on the water or on the camera, but I mean, when he ran him into, their, into the pond, and that was amazing. You guys did a phenomenal job. And, Thank you so much. It's an absolute pleasure, sir. Yeah. You've got you in Yala. Yes. And what started well ends well with That's a little right. bit of work in between. That's right. Well, and I mean, when you bow hunt, sometimes you're going on long tracks. And, and I mean, when I, when, when I took the shot and we made the shot, the visual both of us had was, man, you know, he's going to be dead. And yeah. that didn't happen. And, you know, you guys knew what to do from the moment one. We used the dogs, got the drones up. I mean, it was, it was all in the Thank Get him you. to the shed, yes. get him in the salt, and we'll keep going. Yes, sir. Thank you again. <laughs> I can tell you, having hunted, you know, well over 40 years now, I mean, we're basically close to 50 years of hunting now, to capture all of that on film and the rawness and how it all went down on the Eastern Cape of South Africa, I'll never forget that. You know, we, we took the meat and donated it to the local school 
the mount will be something that I'll cherish. The video, the stories, and all of that, my small part of making it all come together. I mean, you talk about something that is, is epic. I'll, I'll never, never, ever forget that hunt and that recovery. Congratulations, Wade. There's nothing quite like hunting big game animals on the motherland of South African soil. We've had an unforgettable time with John X Safaris, and we can guarantee we will absolutely be back again to continue fulfilling our dreams of South African hunting adventures. Hey, thank you for watching, and join us next week on a new episode of Americana Outdoors. Americana Outdoors is a CareCo TV production.